I mentioned the story yesterday. Got some feedback here. Uh, you know, people you know weighing in, giving both sides of this with uh, the whole trademark with the tribute to the Redskins and the Blackhawks and the Chiefs. You don't realize how many sports uh, names, nicknames we have that are affiliated with Native Americans. Now, why are colleges caving into the pressure? Pro teams aren't. And the Redskins, right now they're on the clock because we're looking at the Redskins and that nickname again. Mike Wise wrote a great column for the Washington Post, and I wanted to uh, talk to him about this and where we stand. And, Mike, you were even given the time frame of nothing's going to be decided anytime soon, but why has this resurfaced or stayed on the surface? That's the biggest question for me as well, Dan. I, you know, I, I, I wrote a piece in the, in the paper's Outlook section, the weekend section, essentially, uh, saying, you know, Robert Griffin III would be the perfect guy to actually take a stand on this. But, but my point was that no athletes take stands like Jim Brown or Arthur Ashe, those guys used to. And for whatever reason, that came after the season. Um, there was, an, there was an, a symposium that I was a part of, and more importantly, a lot of American Indians were a part of it, the National Museum of the American Indian on racial stereotypes in sports. That got all kinds of coverage in late January. And then on the heels of that, the team and the, the, the mayor of Washington, D.C., came out and said, if they're going to move back to the district at any point and a new stadium be built, we're going to have to have a conversation about the name. And then you throw in Bruce Allen, the general manager, saying the name will never change. Boom, all of a sudden you've got a recipe for a little bit of off-season controversy before the salary cap stuff. What do the Native Americans want? They want the name and the Im- imagery done away with. They just feel like it's been too long. They, uh, it's uh, Robert Holden, this guy, he's the deputy director of the National Congress of American Indians. He sat on this panel, and he sat up there, and he said, look, I, I lived in a border town. I was called Dirty Redskin as a child. It was the worst thing you could possibly call me, and it was like the, being called the N-word if you were an American Indian. And he said, and, and many of my people feel this way. And, and while I know it sounds like it's saying cup or bedspread to you guys, it's not for me. You're not honoring us. Is there a tribe that does look at a particular sports team? I don't know if you've, you've uh, sort of widened this and looked at the Blackhawks. To me, I think it's the best-looking logo in all of sports. <laughs> But I don't know if the Blackhawks, the, the tribe, look at it and say it's offensive. Yeah, well, it's a lot happier-looking Indian yeah. than, the, <laughs> than, the, than the Redskins Indian. The Redskins Indian looks like he's just upset that Dan Snyder ever bought the team. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think you're right. I, you know, for them, and I understand what you're saying. Look, look, I grew up, I think I had a Redskins poncho when I was a kid because I didn't want to be the Cowboys. I wanted to be the Indians. And my dad used to collect arrowheads. And I thought, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that grew up Boy Scouts who probably made bad headdresses and pretend made fake woo-woo sounds. And today they're told that was wrong. I could see their point. Well, what am I doing wrong? I'm honoring the Native American, the history and the bravery. They're like, wait a minute, we were hunters and gatherers. Why do you got to portray us as warriors and savages? They want, they want to have the last say on how they're depicted and they sure as heck don't want to be a mascot but mike we've seen colleges cave in with nicknames why because they're most of, many of them are under federal uh, federal protection federal government the ncaa governing body when they did away with all the they tried to bully the schools into ditching their mascots if they're going to host championship events the reason they did it is because a lot of a lot of the schools were state schools and I know that Chief Alinawak, uh was basically put to rest at Illinois and other places. The, the Redskins are essentially a private business organization. Even though the, multi, even though the NFL, Dan, is a multinational conglomerate at this yeah. point, the, the Redskins are a private business ent- entity, and they can do what they want. So what's next for Daniel Snyder and the Redskins? I mean, they've kind of dug in, and they and and essentially, it's going to take a year to decide whether this trademark appeal deal is going to go to the next level. If, in fact, the the trademark appeals board at the U.S. Patent Court says they are going to overturn the the trademarks that the team has, then you or I could sell T-shirts on the corner, and it would it would harm Daniel Snyder's business irrevocably. So, what's going to happen is. If they lose that case, they're going to have to appeal and find some other way to market. I think they're dug in. 
I don't think I think this thing's going to come to a head in the next three years, where a bunch of uh, a bunch of American Indian groups align with other political lobbies and they decide we're going to boycott FedEx and we're going to tell everybody to use UPS. And it's going to get that point at some point. Daniel Snyder is going to be hitting the pocketbook, and I'm going to say within five years you will see this team change its name. Mike Wise of the Washington Post. Uh, before I let you go, Robert Griffin the third uh, update. You know, more importantly here, and I man, I heard from Redskin fans uh, when I talked about the field that you have there with the Reds. Daniel Snyder's a billionaire. And you can't get a damn you know football field that, that actually looks playable. My backyard looks better than your playing field. Uh, uh, have they done anything? Will they do anything to that playing surface there? They need to. Uh, in one of our you know, one of those off-the-record conversations after a game, uh, Robert Griffin III looks at me and he goes, what do you think of the field today? And I go, I don't know. I didn't play on it. And he goes, he goes, man. And he just shook his head and he walked back to his locker. And this was like halfway through the season. Bruce Allen admitted, general manager, that they had, they had missed a window to re the field and they are going to hit that window this year. That's during the bye week. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, I, oh, know, I know what you're thinking. Yeah. You, you spend all this money. Crazy. On, on, on a team, you're the fourth most profitable franchise in the world, and you can't freaking have a good field. And D'Angelo Hall was a victim of the salary cap. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. D'Angelo Hall, God speed him well. He was on the 30th ranked pass defense as well. <laughs> well, he made your job easier, gave you something right about talk about. Yes, I'm, I'm going to miss that part of D'Angelo <laughs> Hall. I won't miss the part where he couldn't bring down Jake DeLome uh, on a third in the game on the line. Uh, good to visit with you, Mike. Thanks for your insights. <laughs> Bye, Dan. Uh, Mike Wise, Washington Post.